Happy Monday. Hello, Soulfire. Thank you for joining us for the Chronicles of Chiron, the Lion, the Witch, and the Healer. My name is Christopher, the Astro Medium. I am Jessica Tanzel, Medium, Spiritual Teacher, and Healer. Tonight, we are discussing... Well, first of all, we need to make it very clear that we're excited to be here. I know you're... I, I didn't say this, but I'm excited to be here. We are we excited, excited to, be here. to be here, okay? So we have been heavily activated this week. We are still sitting in some new moon energy, although the moon has entered Taurus as of 1.33 p.m. Eastern time. So we're kind of out of that Aries energy, but we're still in that really intense new moon and Aries energy, which was super potent, very volatile in certain ways and sensitizing. And I definitely felt it in my body. What did you feel? I felt for sure, I felt the intensity in my body. I have released several times and like ugly stuff. Like Ew, oh I had God, to yes. come to terms with things that I had done in my life. And I was like, I don't want to do this. Yes. I did feel there was some past stuff coming up and I almost felt like I had things dropping in from being in plant medicine situations, okay, where I feel like things that were brought up then were finally dropping in or finally releasing or I was allowing it because I, I normally take time to purge my emotions and release them, but I've just been so busy and I've just been feeling really good and being in the flow that I've just been like, oh, I don't want to do that. Although... So there were definitely things that were building up, but it brought it up and there are reasons for that. Well, what are the reasons for that? Well, well, um, Chiron is in Aries right now. So for those of you who are not familiar, um, Chiron is the wounded healer, is this archetypal energy in astrology. Chiron is actually a, a half man, half horse that they, um, which is Sagittarius actually, Chiron and Sagittarius are actually the same. Mm -hmm. So they come from the same mythology. And uh, Chiron is a wounded healer. It's part of the Hercules or Heracles um, mythology. When you get into that, he spent his whole life trying to heal himself from the time he was injured um, in the process because he already was, even before he was wounded, he was a healer. He was a teacher and a mentor. And upon being injured, it gave him more purpose to heal even more. So the, the purpose of this energy is that it stimulates a agitation or a weakness that makes you feel like something needs to be worked on. And through that, something does get worked on because the minute you open the door to healing at all, so many things get caught up in that web from past life experiences, generational trauma. So Chiron doesn't necessarily focus on those specifically. He is the energy that moves, is a transmuting energy from one state to another, kind of like Neptune, but for healing. It could be a, a simple switch of perspective. It can be a full-blown heart opening experience, but he represents that energy. And so does Pallas, which is another asteroid, and Kariklo, which is the feminine um, Chiron archetype, which is also an asteroid. But Chiron being in Aries right now is very important. He has been in Aries for a little bit. He was in Aries for pretty much all of 2020. And he stays in Aries the longest because his orbit is very strange. So that makes sense means, to why it's so intense though. I mean, just, it's like here, I'm going to stir it up and stir it up and stir it up. And then it was like, boom, I was like, what just hit? Because you had all these planets, sun, um, yeah. Mercury, and Venus. Ceres is also in Aries, but those three passing over that nine degree Aries point where Chiron is activating that for us, but it's conjunction. So the sun conjuncting Chiron, that did something to our egos a little bit, but the moon conjuncting Chiron is emotional healing. Venus conjunct Chiron is more open-hearted healing within relationships, things coming to the surface that need to be worked through as you are projecting each other's trauma onto each other. Things, themes like that will start to come to the surface. And if you're not in a relationship, that can also be things that are going on within you, where you, the way you're treating yourself, the way that, how you're taking pleasure in things. Because when Venus crossed over that, it really brought themes up about how are you enjoying your life and are you choosing not to enjoy it on purpose? And is that a trauma response? Those are some themes that are yeah, whether it's worthiness or you're just too busy and you or you have beliefs that in place that don't allow it. So long story short, 
Chiron being there in the Aries party was important, but you had Sun, Moon, Mercury, and um, Sun, Moon, Mercury, and Venus all there together forming conjunctions. They weren't just in Aries. See, they're up here, Chiron's back here. And that activated us so much. And of course, Aries, you and I both have Aries energy in us. Your rising sign is Aries. My midheaven is Aries, and I have um, a very high highly packed first house. So Chiron's moon, Venus, Mars, and Jupiter all in the first house, which is ruled by Aries. So we have this energy in us and we got activated. Your rising got activated at some point because there was a conjunction to your rising. So that would have had a lot to do with your physical body, the appearance. There's a lot. Relationships have a lot to do with that. So and that Look, was so many things are like, as you're saying it, I'm like, oh, oh okay. Uh-huh. Because it showed up differently for everybody, because you know the new moon happened, but it didn't happen the same for everyone because we all have a different combination and placements in our natal chart. I want to ask you this weekend because we're talking about Chiron and the new moon, and I know because we've just chatted a little bit. How did the, I know just that things did come up, but how and when did it come up for you? Because my timing was maybe a little bit different, but I'm curious about um, The timing, I kind of allowed it to happen because I did a new moon ritual. So okay. um, although I did start last Thursday, uh, uh -huh. I started to feel that energy and I knew that that's when you should feel the energy, but I also started to notice sleeping, I want to say better, but it wasn't like I didn't have insomnia. It was just, I was actually staying asleep or feeling like I was sleeping deeper, which new moons can do that, but they can also make me feel a little bit more sensitive. Um, like, like I need to cross my arms a little bit, like I'm more vulnerable and that's what they'll do because the sun and the moon are conjunct. Your, your subconscious is more available. Your, your consciousness and your subconscious are there's a coalescing there. And then we're being activated in all these different ways um, based on our natal chart. And also being a sensitive person, highly sensitive people, empaths, light workers, star seeds, we are sensitive um, to astrological shifts. My rising sign is in Cancer, so I'm, which is ruled by the moon. And so I'm very ruled by the moon. Moon phases very much affect me. And this moon would have affected you very much because your rising is in Aries as well. But, um, we are all affected by it in some way, but I'm specifically in astrology, we would say I am very affected by the phases and activity of the moon. And it's very, absolutely, I feel that. So there's, there's a lot going on within this new moon. And a lot of people talk about manifesting with moon phases and that's absolutely and the reason for that is like on the full moon the sun and the moon are opposite which means the the subconscious and the consciousness there's an opposition so there's a choice that needs to be made there's an adjustment and you feel pulled in a specific direction which brings your heightens your emotional states creates a stronger gravitational pull, um, agitates the water molecules in your body, thus uh, producing specific types of hormone sequencing that can cause agitation, frustration, hyper-reactivity, um, anxiety, restlessness. And that allows emotional states to come to the surface and emotions are magnetic. Go ahead. Well, just how wild because we hear it all about the full moon and I do a lot of manifesting also with the moons, but we're also getting ready to talk about the release. But I just want to make note that this new moon brought that shit up. Like, yes, and not necessarily is, the moon in general, because it's yes. going to flow. The new moon in Aries is going to feel a little bit more full to people because Aries energy is so energetic, especially because it's ruled by Mars. And Mars is that physical action oriented blood pumping energy, primal energies in us. So it, it was doing that. And the moon doesn't like being in cancer, but the moon, it was like, you have to do this moon. You have to focus on yourself. Okay. Just like Venus, Venus doesn't like being in cancer. Now it's time to focus on yourself and what your needs are, which make those two planets uncomfortable where the sun and Mercury were doing pretty well there. Okay. So it balanced out the energies, but people manifest at the full moon point because your emotions are magnetic and they're more heightened. So they have a more easy, the frequency is stronger and more 
whether it's negative or positive, okay, the frequency has a stronger magnetic pull. The new moon, there's more introversion, more inward focus. The subconscious is where you're going. That's where things, more healing really can take place at the new moon point, even though you may experience the healing purging at the full moon point more. The new moon is where all the seeds are planted. And so it's the ending of a cycle and the beginning of a new one. So there are things that can be released, but that's the time to put intentions in there and then full moon is where you pick the fruit, okay? Uh, or where it starts to blossom. And so manifesting with the moon is wonderful, but what about healing with the moon? So At all levels of that, like when I think of specifically healing with the moon this week, like <clears throat> for a woman too, there, there's a whole nother level of healing with the moon and Yes. My cycle synced up with it. Tima, here we go. But like there's the whole like system of healing with the moon. I find it important to do a release when you're doing manifesting because you're making room. So I'm so glad to talk about that. But also just the flow and allowing and rather that expect it rather than that expectation of I've got to do it this way or the full moon's gonna bring me this. Instead it's just like well, let's see what happens and what comes up instead of expecting it. Because I was not expecting this new moon. To be I was. I was only because in, on October 1st, the day before October 1st in 2020, um, I, and of course back then I was going through a lot of stuff that was coming up for me. And the full moon in Aries, which was on October 1st, that was so powerful for me. And I had never cried that hard since I was like a little kid when I threw temper tantrums. I cried and screamed and was like nauseous so much I was going to throw up. Now, it wasn't like that so much last night. The new moon didn't, I still definitely got in there, but the emotion wasn't as heightened. I kind of had to pull it out and I did it on purpose in a ritual setting. So I actively did it, but I started to feel that energy build on Thursday. I started to feel that. And then last night, literally at 10, 15, um, I was just getting done with a reading and I wanted to make sure I started my ritual around the exact point. I like doing it at that 10 31 PM is when it was exact. I wanted to do it around then Well, I was getting done with the reading and I was starting to feel like I needed to cry really bad. And so it was probably from the person I was doing a reading with that's normal, but I also knew that this is more than it usually is. Something's ready. It's ready now. And so all I had to do was get in there and get in that space and allow it. And there were things that were coming up and it did get pretty messy. It just wasn't to the extent that the full moon was. So I did notice that. And I was almost scared that it would happen that way this time, but it didn't. In October, it was effortless. That's how you know something is coming out of you when it's just happening. You don't have to pull it out. Well, I think that there's the fact of not resisting it. Like today, I did my new moon ritual last night and then this evening after seeing clients like got in my room and just bawled mm -hmm. and I felt the same way like okay it's not all mine and also interesting because yours was right at your ritual so we want to talk about like the timing of emotions is different for everyone yeah. I was feeling it Friday now I did use plant spirit this week I was using cacao and really um, getting to know cacao and yep. so I have been I've had plant spirit in my system this week mm -hmm. and so Friday I was like what the fuck well I felt it on Friday too I just didn't express it and I didn't allow it to come forth but I get when you say Friday I was like yeah I was feeling that too well because you were feeling it since Thursday so yeah. I, I so it's so kind of if you could tell us how that came up for you like for me I was I mainly felt it Friday and yesterday or in today but for you how was your progression when it started the intensity thursday because some people can relate to having different intensities yeah mine was just starting to notice that and of course my brain says okay are you feeling like this because you're planning on it being the new moon and so you're making it happen don't think i don't think things like that i well, absolutely know, do i don't just buy into all that shit not you know i don't i definitely believe that in self-fulfilling prophecies because that just proves that the law of attraction is real i can make things happen but i know when i when something is happening beyond making it happen and definitely last night it was like whoa because i wasn't even really thinking about it it wasn't like yeah. it planned but at the same time your system may even 
allow it to happen. If you plan on doing a ritual, that's when it can come up. So healing with the moon phases, just keeping you on a schedule is actually pretty healthy. But actually the moon, because it rules the subconscious, is so important when it comes to the healing phases. So manifesting with the moon is all about magnetism and the law of attraction, but that's, it's the same with healing as well. And new moons are a little bit more actually where the healing takes place. So the new moon, something releases, something else may have the intention of coming up. It comes up at the full moon. It comes, starts to come out. We're really experiencing it. And then it finally releases out of the system by the end of that moon phase as the new, next new moon starts and begins. So it, it has that capability. And it's all about how available your subconscious is to you. Because there's so many things that you can consciously and mentally want to bring up, but it's not there. You're, you've not been triggered. And that's what this moon did. It was very triggering because anytime the moon crosses Chiron like that, we are triggered emotionally from a subconscious level in some way. This does not mean that, oh my God, now I'm having a panic attack. It can, and it absolutely can. And that's some of the ascension symptoms that are happening right now is panic and anxiety that people have never experienced before. And this brought some of that to the surface as well. But I'm also talking about someone saying something that otherwise would not have offended you, just offending you and you taking it wrong. I experienced that on Friday. Someone saying something to me and I did not like it and noticing it on my way home driving, I screamed at them in my head because I knew I said, you didn't react that way to them in person, but that doesn't mean that you still didn't actually respond. You need to get this out or it's going to go somewhere. It's going to lodge itself in your body. It's going to go into your gut. It's, it's going to go into your head and create a headache. Get it out. You know, that's what venting does is helps you get something out that you weren't able to express there. And that's just part of us being in a civilized society, right? We're still animals. We still have a subconscious that still has a lot of primal qualities to it. So this was a very primal moon, very animalistic, very in the body. Sexual things were coming up. This is all airy stuff. Yeah. All that's right. Good. Resonating. <laughs> Resonating. That's for real. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yes. <laughs> and the, the important factor in here is that also you can heal throughout your life with Chiron. So Jessica, what is your Chiron sign again? I know it's in the first house. It's Taurus. It's Taurus. It's okay. Your Chiron is in Taurus okay. because you're part of the Chiron and Taurus generation. So Chiron will stay in signs for an extended period of time. It's not a few months. Sometimes it's a couple of years. So you were the Chiron and Taurus uh, people. Chiron stays in Taurus a pretty long time too because it's right after Aries. Um, I'm Chiron in Cancer, which would have been um, a few generations down. And my Chiron is also in the first house. And the reason I ask you that is because we also want to chart where Chiron is. Chiron makes certain aspects or angles to other planets. Chiron can make a trine to your Mars and a conjunction to your moon and a sextile to your sun all at the same time. That's a lot of stuff happening, okay? We don't, just like when you're hearing a song, you're not hearing every instrument separately. You're hearing the whole organism happen, right? So it's all happening. But Chiron also, throughout your lifetime, will make aspects to where he was when you were born. So those, that's transiting Chiron, making an angle to where your natal Chiron is. So Chiron, in about a... Seven years, Chiron is going to get to the point in the sky where he was when you were born. And that's going, that's called Chiron return. And that, is going, now your Chiron return is going to look very different than other people's because of how active you have been in your life with healing things. Those Chiron um, throughout your lifetime will make aspects to himself. So at some point he'll make a sextile to himself. It'll be Chiron sextile, Chiron, Chiron trying Chiron, Chiron opposite Chiron. Um, but then um, we come back and those are very important too. Those are different at times in your life where there is some type of triggering of something that you've suppressed and there's things that come back up. But a lot of times it's massive healing where like um, I'm going through um, 
one of these and you're, you notice when Chiron is making a positive aspect to himself that it doesn't necessarily sensitize you as much as it starts things in your life and things within you start to respond from a more healed place and you start to attract things that represent where you are now that will change beliefs in you. This is not midlife crisis timing. Now that is Uranus territory. So Uranus opposition. So when Uranus opposes himself, that is your midlife crisis and yours is in about two years. So yes. <laughs> so, and that happens differently for everyone. It's between 37 and 44 years old, usually 39 to 43. So um, your, your Uranus opposition is coming and that is, um, there's a very wonderful book that if anyone out there is very interested in these cycles of astrology through healing, through consciousness, so awakening, because Uranus is the great awakener. There is a book by one of my absolute favorite astrologers and spiritual teachers. Her name is Barbara Hanclaw, and it is called, um, well, first of all, everyone should be reading Alchemy of Nine Dimensions, but then there's also Astrology and the Rising of Kundalini, which talks about a lot of different astrological phases and transits that move you forward in your evolution, but it really focuses on three. Do you know what the first one is? Uh, no. Yeah, you do. Yes, you do. Saturn Return. So, <laughs> you know, you're, yes, you know all about this. We did, that. we did yours recently. We threw a party. Yeah. For and I get two Saturn returns this year. So I'm going to experience this. Yes, twice, because Saturn is going to go retrograde and he's going to pass over the point where he was when I was born again. So um, some people get rare. Some people get three of them. So you have your Saturn return at 29 and a half, which is very physical stuff, life stuff, career, job, marriage, divorce, something changes that moves you into a grown-up state, a more mature state of consciousness. And then you go through other transits like Neptune square Neptune in your mid thirties, which prepares you in your mid to late thirties. You'll go through Neptune square Neptune, which makes you question things. It's also very spiritual time, but you're not, you're not sure about your beliefs anymore. It's going to make you it makes you question so much. And that is the first of the midlife crisis transits. You'll go through Uranus opposition and then you have Chiron return at 50. So talking about this and cause you and I have talked a little about these returns and the midlife crisis and how these happen. And how can our listeners? Yes. Help me help them. How can they utilize knowing one, get with Christopher to know when these are happening because he yeah, is your guy. That sounds like gibberish to some people. I'm sorry. Well, no, I think, well, and I think it's good because everybody's chart so unique. So like you said, all of this will the, affect like Christ is coming, even though it's not Chiron, but it's 39 to 44. Well, mine's coming closer to 44 rather than closer to 39. Yes, it so, is. That will affect it differently as well. So when people get with you or for their charts, you're able to say this and this and this and this. Yes. Well, these are things you can ask him. Well, what about this? You know? And so how can they navigate when they know a big transition like that's happening? Um, so when you know that one of these transits is coming, you are more consciously prepared for it. You have, um, you start to prepare yourself and know that certain probabilities may ensue that surround these certain themes and you keep it broad because it can show up in various ways. You can go through your Chiron return at the same time as you go through Chiron conjunct the moon. If you have a moon in Aries, I had a reading today and a reading last night with two people who have now gone through their Chiron return within the last year and a half and are now experiencing Chiron conjunct the moon right after, yeah. <laughs> which is it's the same, but it's a nut Chiron conjunct Chiron. And then just months after you go through Chiron conjunct the moon, it extends your Chiron return. Does that make sense? Yeah. Because you might, you went through Chiron. Um, if let's say your ascendant sign was at nine degrees of Aries, because I know it's an Aries. I just don't know the degrees. Well, you would be experiencing Chiron conjunct your ascendant, which would be its own thing. Okay. So if you're, preparing for these things, you start to see if these things are going to show up for you and you choose with conscious awareness to respond differently. And also you can say, 
this is supposed to happen because when my soul decided to incarnate into the physical body, it knew the exact time in which that occurred. And it would also know at that exact time, which sign would be on the Eastern horizon in which it would incarnate through because that's the direction in which the incarnation occurs. And that sign would color the aspects of the physical body and the chart would be chosen. And that means from that point, at the time you experience the transit you're currently experiencing, your soul knew that would happen at that exact synchronized timed out phase in your life. So there, it's not, why is this happening now? No, that also means that there is an end to them. And that if you if you use the energy instead of letting it use you, yes. you, can, you can see the wave coming. You can get out ahead of it and ride it. Let's talk about that wave because you said see the wave coming. And I just want to mention, and I want to ask you a question, but when I think see the wave coming, you may not know all aspects of that wave, but you know a wave. It's it is a singular different. wave that could crash or, you know, waves are very um, volatile. I mean, you wouldn't even know, like, well, you'll, you'll answer this. We'll see a wave coming for the return of Chiron, for our Saturn return. Sorry, I said it wrong. The, all of those Every, things. Yeah, that's But that's you, very, you know, necessarily the aspect. Like, it's not always the aspect of, like, work or personal life or certain healing from childhood like that wave could look different every time it's it's looking different for everyone yes because your chart is as unique as a thumbprint okay so because even if someone had your exact same chart um on that exact same day there are different there are aspects in your natal chart like the moon which is very affected by environment so don't get it twisted this is not a one size fits all so, but when you, everyone will experience Saturn return, Uranus opposition and Chiron return generally around the same time. We all go through certain transits at the same time. And that's why you see people in mass quantities moving to different stages in their life all in a synchronized way. Why? Because it's just in our hormonal sequencing? No, that hormonal sequencing is part of the grid that the planets are also linked into. Okay, so it's just like everyone always makes a change between 28 and 31 years old, but usually 29 and 30, and you notice their shift from the way they were living their life before and when they enter their 30s, and this has to do with that Saturn cycle, which is actually just like our body renews itself every seven and a 7.3 years, which if you add 7.3 years four times, it's it's a Saturn return. It's a full Saturn cycle. So he is the structural, he rules structure and restriction and, and things that are bound together and, and keeping things as they are, conservatism, um, hard work, discipline, but that will also rule aspects of us all restructuring our lives in specific ways. So when you get into Chiron territory, you're working with an energy that is transdimensional or or is almost transdimensional because Chiron is really the asteroids wherever they are they represent a link just like Chiron sits between the orbit of Saturn and Uranus well Saturn is an outer planet like Uranus Neptune and Pluto but Jupiter and Saturn, we group them together because they're physical outer planets and they rule things within our physical life and our reality. Saturn is reality. Uranus is the first planet that really moves our states of consciousness into higher dimensions. Uranus awakens the consciousness, awakens you to something new and propels you into future states or having possibility there. And beyond Uranus, you move into Neptune, which dissolves boundaries, dissolves reality, moves you into the astral plane and to connect with your higher self. And then from there, you move into like Eris, which is a dwarf planet and Pluto, which rule power darker aspects of the human consciousness, the unconsciousness, and um, transforming your state and evolving you because Pluto is all about evolution. And there are soul contracts that come up with Pluto. But in the center of all that, 
Chiron sits there. Chiron is known as the Rainbow Bridge because he bridges the gap between the old structured ways of the reality that you already are choosing, which is Saturn, and the new future possibilities which you now choose through an awakening, through putting a bolt in the gears that are stopping it from just working like clockwork. And that's what plant medicine does. That's what Kundalini rising does. And Uranus rules Kundalini energy. So the outer planets are your spiritual awakening planets. Pluto is going to be your shadow work. Neptune's going to be your dream work and your astral work and your, your psychic work. Uranus is going to be your psychic work as well, but your innovative work. So as as we're healing with the moon and we're healing with Chiron, it's important to take into factor, like into account where the moon is in relation to because it's gonna help you to know more about what's coming up. Yes, and because the moon is your, your subconscious beingness. You know, our subconscious, that's why people talk about the sun sign and the moon is just as important because the moon is the reflector and bounces that light off of the sun is the light and the moon is so important. And then you have outer energies that take, you know, if Jessica, if I went, walked into a room and you were meditating and you didn't know I was there, which meant you had no awareness of me and you were actually in a deep alpha brainwave state or even deeper, your rising, your sun and your moon would be active at that moment. All three of them would be going. You would be, you would know that you were there. You would have a sense of self, the sun, an awareness, something that you're moving toward. You would have, you would be feeling something and you would be physically there, which is the aspects of the rising sign. Your energy would be able to, you are appearing like something. The minute you start to think and open your mouth, that's when Mercury starts to become activated and the mind starts to go. And as you move out and you get to Chiron, this is the part of you that wants to see yourself differently and move beyond the limitations of the ego into a new healed neural pathway. And the moon and Chiron are very much involved in that. So with the new moon, because we're still in the new moon energy tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we both recommend doing new moon rituals, moon rituals in general. But tell us your biggest tips right now for this new moon and what they should do to enhance their healing right now. Yes. So right now, because Aries is a very physical sign. Um, the energies that are coming in, because um, even from an ascension perspective, there's lots of purging going on and it's affecting the body. Right now, there are vision changes. You're going to notice blurry vision because the, the eyes are changing. Um, you're going to notice um, definitely headaches they're bringing you to first, um, but stop it. I had an agenda here, okay? I knew that was going to happen. So, but also itchy, dry skin. You're going to notice the itchiness of the skin and how there's whelping, there's, there's changes, there's things coming out from our skin as well. Um, breakouts, rashes, um, the digestive changes, lots of things happening. So within a new moon ritual, although the moon is currently not in Aries, the moon is not conjunct Aries right now. The moon was not conjunct Aries at the time of the new moon. It did it hours before that as it was traveling into the conjunction with the sun. But that meant, it doesn't mean that even though they're not in a tight conjunction anymore, that that energy, just like when you shoot off a firework, there's still things that are falling to the ground if they're high enough, like 20 minutes later. So there's still things, the dust is still settling from these energies as they, and especially with Aries, exploded into existence. And it really activates the head and the heart. So an active meditation would be beneficial at this time. Even the moon being in Taurus, something physical, because Taurus is also a very physically focused energy. Active meditation can look like um, some type of yoga or some type of breath work and um, even dance. Dance would be great. Some type of exercise. New moon can dampen the energy levels. So just doing an active meditation is good and doing something that is breath work or gets the blood moving because and activates those energies because you're going to actively bring those emotions up. But also as you move more blood through the system, which that Aries energy is supporting you to do, you're going to 
all those toxins, all those densities, those unprocessed emotions that your DNA and your musculature is releasing into your bloodstream and your lymph to be disposed of gets moved through quicker. So a ritual would be very important right now because with Aries energy, that's all physically focusing on something that has to do with you and the self. Well, doing a ritual is physicalizing an energy. So New Moon and Aries ritual was probably the most perfect one of all the moons to do a ritual right in that regard physicalizing something yes. yes there are other signs where ritualizing it there's another reason why it would be beneficial but the physical aspect of this ritual is important well, we just can you tell i have a mercury in gemini <laughs> just say a couple weeks ago we talked about magic and doing yes. spell work and this is a ritual you are in physically enhancing it with a ritual so i love that just a little bit more magic yes and just as one of our friends likes to say you know she refers to us as mystics and she refers to herself as a warrior well whenever she says that i immediately think of aries because what she means is that her magic is here on the earth and it's through survival and instinct where ours is through our connection to the it's both we have both but she's more focused down here that's root chakra sacral chakra stuff so both are needed so that aries aspect is needed what you got going on this week so i of course if you are not already following me on instagram when in tiktok you absolutely should at the the dot astro medium um, I'm also the in-house intuitive astrologer for Eclipse over Roswell here in Atlanta, Georgia. So if you're in the Atlanta area, you should come to class. Or even if you're not, we do it over Zoom as well. Um, but coming in person is, it, you just, there's just something about being in person at a class and we're starting to do this again now. But I have a lot of participants over Zoom. My skin is itching right now. I'm sorry. I'm like, shit, these symptoms are real, y'all. So Every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. Eastern time, $10 open to the public. I am going to start developing more classes in the future, just so everyone to stay tuned. Um, but this is a all levels welcome. We cover different topics every week. This week we are covering the asteroids. So Juno, Pallas, Vesta, Ceres, Chiron, Cariclo, all of those. So um, that's going to be very interesting because I am really passionate about the asteroids. And... Um, I also, if you'd like to book a reading with me, please go to my website, um, www.christopherwithawymedium.com. Jessica, what do you have going on this week? Well, please do follow me on Instagram and TikTok at the Jessica Tanzel. If you want to book a reading and if you want to subscribe for my events under Magic Monday on my website, thejessicatanzel.com, I have some cacao ceremonies around the wheel of uh, the witch's wheel we're doing beltane yeah. coming up on may 1st we'll do our cacao ceremony i will also be doing new moon and full moon cacao ceremony so i'm excited to bring forward these well, sacred the next full moon. yes it's it's going to be intense yeah so i'm i'm very i feel very excited about that so the best way to find out about those right now is follow me on Instagram and TikTok and also to subscribe on my website to get all my information. TheJessicaTanzel.com. TheJessicaTanzel.com. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Uh, we hope you start using these energies and quit letting them use you. We will see you all next week here on Soul Fire, a virtual spiritual art center. I think so. I think so, too. Uh, at 9.30 p.m. every Monday, we will see you there. Have a good night. Good night, you guys.